What's up, Inspired Vision, plus anybody I might be catching on YouTube? This is day 13 of 19 of our accelerated Algebra 1 course designed to help us prepare for the 2016 Summer Star Test. So today, we're multiplying two binomials. We're determining an equation for a quadratic, given a vertex, point, or zeros. So as always, it is time to learn some math. Let's get to it. Okay, so today is from reporting category 4, TEKS 8.10 and 8.6. We're doing five guided practice questions, four independent practice questions, and then two star release questions. So make sure you catch each one of the 19 days of the summer school, summer school course so you can prepare for the starter test. All right, so today is one of the first days that we're actually talking about quadratics. Notice that the equation for quadratic is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So the a, b, and c all stand for numbers. So we're talking about an equation that is usually three terms long. And something to note is our x is, has to be squared in order to have a quadratic. What a quadratic means is you're going to have either a smiley face going upwards like this, it's called a parabola, or it's going to be a frowny face going downwards, but it always will curve and then reach to a point called a vertex and then start going back up. Or the other way around, it'll start increasing, reach a vertex, and then start going back down. That's how quadratics always work. So... We spent a majority of algebra talking about linear functions. They always follow the format of y equals mx plus b. Today and tomorrow and the next day, we're talking about quadratics. Day 15 is when we're talking about exponential functions. Now, one of the most fundamental reasons of or fundamental topics that we have to get straight for quadratics is on the screen. So it talks about when you get something squared. So if you take a look at number one, we have parentheses 4d plus 1 plus 4d plus 5. Now notice that there's nothing in, in front of either one of these parentheses. So that means we don't even need them. And we're adding between those parentheses. So you can just drop the parentheses and combine like terms. So 4d plus 4d becomes 8d and 1 plus 5 becomes 6. Now the difference between number 1 and 2 is there's nothing in between the parentheses here. No plus, no minus, and definitely no numbers in front of either one of the parentheses. So what that means is we have two different terms times two different terms. So basically we need to distribute twice. Now you may have heard this before. Whenever this comes up, First of all, it, it signals that we're going to have a quadratic. And secondly, a lot of math teachers like to teach it using um, an acronym called FOIL. Or I like to keep us organized by drawing a box. I'm okay with either one of these methods um, because they both organize us for solving these binomial time binomial terms. Now, if you're going to draw a box, here's how it looks. There is two terms in this first set of parentheses separated by a plus sign. So you're going to put this first term on the far left part of the box and then the second term on the bottom uh, left part of the box like this on the outside. And then your next two terms you're going to put them on top, 4d plus 5. Now the goal here is to, to multiply the outside column times the row. So you're just multiplying row, column times row column times row on each box. So your first box you're multiplying 4d times 4d to get this first top left box. So you're going to take the coefficients 4 times 4 that part's easy it's 16. But when you do d times d you have to remember your laws of exponents that we talked about on day 12. Your laws of exponents mean that there's really a one exponent with the d and a one exponent with this d so when you multiply them, you really add them together, and that's the whole reason why you have d squared. d squared means this is going to become a quadratic term, okay, because it's our biggest exponent. 
Now if we keep doing this, we take this column times this row, then the next one up is this box. So we're going to multiply 4D times 1 to be 4D. And if we move over to the second column times the first row, then 5 times 4D becomes 20D. And then 5 times 1 for the last row is 5. Make sure you multiply, not adding there. Now, there's one more thing to do here. We have like terms. It's always, if you did this right, it's always going to be your bottom left and your top right. We need to add those together. So 4 plus 20 becomes 24. D. This is going to become your middle term because our biggest exponent goes first, which is going to be our top left box, and then we're going to drop the one that doesn't have a D with it as last. Now, notice we have three terms, just like on the previous slide where I said the whole uh, format that we need to get our quadratics in is AX squared plus BX plus C. This is the same format, so this is our answer. This is our goal for quadratics to get our answers to look like this. Now, you may have heard the term FOIL before. FOIL is said first, outer, and our last. I'm going to show this with different colors. So if I do 4D plus 1 times 4D plus 5, the first thing I'm going to multiply is the 4D times 4D. So the green signals the first thing that you do to get 16D squared. The second thing you do is the outer terms, 4D plus 5, to get your 20D. The third thing you do is your inner terms to get your plus 40. And the last thing you do is the last two terms, the 1 times 5. Now, notice it is the same exact answer. So whichever format you feel comfortable with, as long as you get the right answer. Okay, the next topic for today. The next topic today talks about zeros. Zeros is an important um, thing with quadratics. Zeros are the solutions. Zeros are when y equals zero and when the function hits the x-axis. So three things here to remember with zeros. Zeros are the solutions, when y equals zero, and when it hits the x-axis. So when I'm, what I'm talking about with the x-axis is our quadratic is going to make a curve, either going up or going down. It's either not going to hit the x-axis at all, only hit it once, which means it only has one solution, or can only hit a maximum of twice to have two solutions. So we would need to know what these two answers would be if it hits twice. Okay, so our question says it has the answers of 8 and 9. So that means if I was to graph each one of these, and look at the equation, it would have to hit the x-axis at 8 and 9. So we can tell by looking at the picture, or we can tell by looking when y equals 0. Okay, so on A, if I look at the picture, I see it hits at negative 1 and then 9. So that's not right, okay? So it's not 8 and 9. By the way, when you get into Algebra 2, they teach you to factor as another way to solve these answers. So for us, because we're just trying to pass star, just looking at the graph and looking at the table is, is, will get you past the test, and that's the goal here. So on B, if I graph it, I can see that it hits, I can't really tell if it hits once or twice, but it's definitely in the right area of being either 8 and 9. So what I can do next is, what you would want to do next anyways, is look at the table, scroll down to 8 and 9, and see that they're both 0. This is what we want, because zeros are when y equals 0. These are my solutions. So B would be the answer. But if I check C, I can definitely tell that those two are definitely not 8 and 9, and neither is D. Those look like to be negative 8 and negative 9. So B is my answer here. Okay, next concept for today is talking about vertex. So vertex is considered a point of inflection. A um, way to illustrate that is the vertex, if you have a parabola going upwards, is the minimum value of the, um, of the parabola. It's the absolute minimum value. The vertex, if you have a parabola going downwards, is the absolute maximum value. Okay, so this is a little bit easier to see with your picture. 
All right, so the goal of this question is one of these equations has a vertex at negative 2, 2. So we're going to graph each one of these first, and hopefully we can easily tell what the vertex is. Then we're going to verify that it also passes through this point, negative 5, 20. All right, so here comes A. Here's the graph. Here's my vertex right here. So that would be the minimum point. Then we got to say, okay, is that point negative 2, 2? That point is actually positive 2, negative 2. And if you're not sure, you can look at, use your table to verify that. But that's positive 2, negative 2. So that's, that's not my vertex I'm looking for. On B, if I put this in my Y equals key, just like I see it, I should see a graph that looks like this. Well, that's positive 2, positive 2 as a vertex. So that is not the vertex I'm looking for. C looks like this. Now that looks to be negative 2, 2. So I can go to my graph just to make sure. I see negative 2, 2, so I see the vertex. And another way to, to see this is this has to be the l absolute minimum because it's going upwards. And it, if you look at all my y values, that is the lowest possible point for y. So we know this, this is, the, is the vertex. But we have a second part of this question. It has to have the point negative 5, 20. Negative 5, 20 is on the table, so we know C is the answer. Okay, here comes the last guided practice question. So um, then you're going to practice these concepts, and you're only doing four questions today. So here's the last question. Hopefully you notice you should see nothing between the parentheses. So I either want you drawing a box or doing the FOIL method. If you were to draw a box, you would put a 5a plus 1 on the outside, the far left, 5a minus 1 on the top. Then you would multiply your first column times your first row to be 15a squared. Then the first column times the second row to be positive 3a. Second column times the first row would be negative 5a. And then negative 1 times 1 would be negative 1. I want to combine my like terms, which is negative 5 plus 3 will get you negative 2. Bring your biggest term first, put the negative 2a second, and bring down the negative 1 last. So this answer will be C. And if you did FOIL, you would show the steps here, and you would have the same answer. Okay, I don't care which way you use. I'm a little bit more partial to the box when you're first learning this because I think the box, when you're first doing this, keeps you a little bit more organized. Okay, so here come your questions. I'm showing you two questions at a time. Make sure you pause the video to work these out before I cover the answers. Here come the next two questions. All right, so for number one, what you should have noticed first is the word zeros. Zeros means you're looking for when y equals zero or it crosses the x-axis. So if I graph A, I notice that it crosses here, and we're looking for it at negative eight and positive two. So that appears to be correct. So if I verify it on my table, I see that that is the zeros. So A is my answer. On number two, if you um, multiply these two together by using the FOIL or box, you should have 20a squared plus 16a minus 20a minus 16 when you finish multiplying them together. But then you need to add your like terms together. So it's negative 20 plus 16, or 16 plus negative 20. And you get negative 4a as your middle term. You bring down your biggest term to be 20a squared and the minus 16, and that answer will also be a. All right, the next two. Number three, if you were to graph each one of these, here's what the graphs look like. But we're looking for the vertex at 7, negative 7. So if you look at A, that looks like that is negative 7, positive 7. So 
looks like it's flip-flop. So A doesn't look right. If we look at B, positive 7, negative 7, that does look to be right. So then we would need to look at the table and see if that is has 6, negative 9, which it does. So B is the right answer on number 3. On number 4, we need to multiply these together. When we multiply 3a times 5a, we get 15a squared. Then 5a times negative 5 is negative 25a. Make sure you keep track of that negative sign there. And also the negative sign here, negative 4 times 3a is negative 12a. And then a negative times a negative is positive 20. So tricky, tricky, positive negative signs on this one. Now when I combine my like terms, I'm doing negative 25 plus negative 12, or plus minus in math means minus, so negative 25 minus 12. Either way, you should have negative 37 come out as your middle term, and 15a squared minus 37a plus 20. So my answer is B on this one. Okay, before we end this lesson today, let's take a look at two star questions. These star questions are coming from 2015, but I promise they're on every year, okay? And um, day 16, 17, 18, 19, we'll be doing the 2015 star test, and I know these type of questions are on there. Okay, so this question. This question looks a little hard, but it's really not. All that we they're wanting us to do is work backwards. So if we work backwards, that means we take each one of these answer choices draw a box or foil until we get this. Now notice that's negative six, uh, negative six x squared is my first term. So if I were to multiply three x times three x as my first term, I have nine x squared, which is not negative six x squared. So I can already kind of tell that a is not gonna be my answer. But if I finish it, um, I would have 9x squared plus 12x minus 21, so A doesn't match up. If I were to multiply B, my first two terms would be negative 3x times 2x. That would give me the negative 6x squared. So this means B is already starting to look pretty good. But if I were to finish this, 2x times 4, um, that would be 8x. And then negative 1 times negative 3x to be plus 3x, add my like terms, I would get plus 11x, not negative 11x, or minus 11x, which I need my second term to be. So b is not right. We know c is not going to be right, because my first two terms, 3x times 3x, is 9x squared. Definitely not a match. And if I do d, and I multiply my first two terms, I'm getting negative 6x squared, which is good. And then if I finish the question, combine my negative 8x plus negative 3x, which is the same thing as minus 8, I would get my middle term to be minus 11x, which is what we want. So we want negative 6x squared minus 11x minus 4. Okay, last question for today. This is talking about which graph has the vertex. So remember the vertex is either the absolute max or the absolute min point and contains the 0.513. So if we take a look at all of these questions, we're going to want to take them all at the same time. Notice that these don't have the same um, first term. This is my A term um, in vertex format. But, so, but we would still use our y equals key on each one of these. So remember, for the vertex, we're looking for the very lowest point or the highest point. And if I take a look at f, my vertex would be right here. Now that looks to be about negative 3, negative 5. So that means my vertex isn't right. Okay? And G, that looks to be positive 3, negative 5, so that doesn't, that's not right. H, that's positive 3, positive 5, so that's definitely looking better. Uh, and then I could go to the table and see that it does have 0.513. 
and j, that looks to be negative 3, positive 5. So we know my answer is h here. Okay, so that's it for today's lesson. We're going to be talking more about quadratics uh, tomorrow on day 14. But I hopefully you got a lot of out of this lesson. And stay tuned for tomorrow's lesson.